unable to proceed with the takeover of Bay Football Club. This decision has not been taken lightly. Have you got anything to say to the guys? No, I was just talking to everyone next Saturday at the game. This club desperately needs investment on and off the pitch. Do I want the job? Yes, I want the job. Why do I want the job? I'm a pro football how can that new owner know they're not going to get seven injuries? Supporters say it's one of the most uncertain times in the history of the club. History of the club. History of the club. To give you some context, my team is League One club Bolton Wanderers. We were on the verge of collapsing in August 2019 at the same time as Berry Football Club. Berry were then expelled from the Football League, but a consortium called Football Ventures completed their takeover of my club Bolton at the death. We currently sit rock bottom of the League One table, 18 points from safety. The season hasn't been easy. We were handed a 12 point deduction to begin with because we'd entered administration under previous owner Ken Anderson. We were also unable to bring anybody in until the takeover was completed which ended up being on the 31st of August transfer deadline day that meant we had to play our August games with academy youngsters because most of the senior players had left the club and the five remaining refused to play in games like the home match at Coventry City where the average age of our squad was 19 years old the lowest average age team in the history of Bolton Wanderers. Other League One clubs began to resent how our situation affected them. Andy Holt, who was the chairman at Aki Stanley, and Nigel Clough, who was the manager of Burton Albion, and the entirety of Doncaster became angry that they didn't get to play us when we had youngsters, like some clubs. We actually postponed the Doncaster Rovers match this season because the club were worried about the mental and physical being of their young players. We're talking 16, 17 year olds with absolutely no experience at any sort of professional level here being thrown into the deep end, conceding five goals a match, playing three games in seven days. As a consequence from that, we faced a £70,000 fine and received an 18-month suspended five-point deduction, which means as long as we behave for those 18 months, we won't have the deduction. The EFL appealed the leniency of this punishment, but the final decision was made by an independent body who said that will be that. We also changed managers. Phil Parkinson left and in came two Boltonians, Keith Hill and David Flitcroft, and we will be talking to manager Keith Hill today. Keith, welcome to Bolton Wanderers. How pleased are you to be appointed the manager of this football club? Ecstatic. We go into every game preparing to win. Um, you know, when we plan to win. When you first came, you mentioned that it was your dream job to establish this pride back in Bolton. Do you ever think, with everything that's been thrown at the club, what have I got myself into? Realistically, as a manager, you look at a price deduction, you look at where you are uh, with respect to the players that you've got to work with, the players that you uh, can potentially recruit, and you're looking at it potentially as a relegation. Now, I've been manager for 12 years with no relegation. So... That was the only one where I'm looking at thinking, I don't see it as a negative, I see it as, a, I see it as a, an unbelievable opportunity to rebuild the football club. And that rebuilding job will take more than 20 games.
Bolton versus Sunderland. I really thought we'd won it. I really thought we'd won that game. <laughs> It was one of those because it was a really good result to get the point and we played good football and it was after that game that I thought we might stay up because some of them were meant to be one of the better teams in the division and we were, we were great against them. We gave as good as we got but yeah. Talking about Keith Hill, because he was one of the first big decisions, yeah. Michael James uh, appointed Keith Hill. As a Bolton fan, you love seeing a Boltonian, you love seeing David yeah. Flitcroft as well. It's brilliant. Uh, perhaps maybe with rose tinted glasses, I'm looking at it. From an outside point of view, do you think it's a sensible appointment? I think you'd be more worried if a manager came in and you had no idea who, where'd he come from, yeah. who's he do what. It, what's it, you know, I think it's not a bad thing to have someone who knows what it means. Mm. Keith Hill's been proven to know what he's doing yeah. and in quite tight circumstances as well. You don't want someone in for the sake of it. Like Clinton Baptiste from Phoenix Knights. He's from Bolton, but he couldn't manage the team. <laughs> It was nice to see um, or hear how hard Michael James worked to to uh, save the club and um, he's been a stalwart supporter of Old Wonders for many, many years and obviously in the good old days um, I remember spending some time in Japan with him when we were on tour so uh, I know him from way back then in such a difficult period um, with, with Keith and David in charge now. Um, it's patience from the fans really to uh, allow the club to try and regrow but it would have to be done I would imagine very slowly now. deserved and a well needed victory because we went into this match with a slight negativity I would say and a lot of people felt a bit sick, people who work with the club, people who, the fans of course, the players, the manager, I think there was that, that feeling, that overwhelming fe feeling of oh, what, if, what if we don't get this victory because it's so important and that lack of self belief, that lack of belief I think comes from these last couple of matches because since we got ourselves into positive points it was great but then that positivity from that, that momentum has seemed to have faded it's been picked right up now. The atmosphere, the buzz at full time was tremendous and we'll take that into this year, finish this year off with these two games coming up with utmost positivity. To have the opportunity to come to a club like Bolton is something that you can't really turn down. Do 
you still have this desire and feeling that you can pull safety off? Of course, um, we're all trying to, to fight to go in the right direction and we all work hard on the training pitch to, to do the best that we can and be prepared the best we can for the games on Saturday. It's evident that you're working hard, however, there has been some tough results this season, one of which when you were here against Lincoln City with the 5-1 loss, a scoreline like that. How do you pick yourself up and get back into the mentality that you've just described to me? Obviously it's difficult to take, um, get, getting beat like that game against Lincoln, um, but look at it, uh, take, take the negatives from it and sometimes you can almost take a positive spin on these type of things, so it's almost getting back into training and working hard on the training pitch. All supporters want a three-point experience. Mm. I think they've got to stick with the club, see through the short-term losses and realise that there's a big, big future for the football club and a big winning future for the football club. Mm. But it can only be achieved and developed you know, once we get a solid footballing foundation in place. Yeah. And that will probably take from the 1st of February through to the first game of next season to develop. To play for a club like Bolton is, is a great thing and a, a great opportunity for me. I know they'll try the best of the players will, but uh, I think they have to face that they'll probably get relegated and the most important thing for them and the board would be to plan for next season, make sure that they get the right players, L listen to what Keith and David have got to say because they're massively experienced in these divisions and I'm sure that if they go down they'll get them straight back out and get them promoted. slack needs to be cut for supporters who are having these high expectations because we don't know what else to crave other than three points and survival because we don't really know what's happening with the club we don't know what the rebuilding plans are and until we get a little bit more communication and a little bit of knowledge on the plans and the way the club wants to go forward and perhaps we will never we won't see these plans until next season when we're in league two or we might not see these plans until they're really set in motion in the next couple of years but until we do we are going to crave three points on the pitch. We are going to crave what's in front of us and the instant success. And right now that's surviving. And right now what we're seeing on the pitch is absolutely nowhere near that. So it's difficult. It's really difficult as a supporter. And these supporters come every single match. They're sat there and they are getting less and less patient. Now we should just try to look forward. Obviously, what's happened in the past, we have to put it to a side. And just obviously, you know, it could have been a lot worse. But the so club is uh, slowly and surely getting itself into two feet again. And then hopefully, the progression will be there for everybody to see in, in, in the coming years. See through the short term losses and realise that there's a big, big future for the football club and a big winning future for the football club.